السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على نبيك محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد يقول الله تعالى وترى الشمس إذا طلعت تزاور عن كهفهم ذات اليمين وإذا غربت تقربهم ذات الشمال وهم في فجوة منه ذلك من آيات الله من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وتحسبهم أيقاظا وهم رقود ونقلبهم ذات اليمين وذات الشمال وكلبهم باسط ذراعيه بالوصيد لو اطلعت عليهم لوليت منهم فرارا ولملئت منهم رعبا وكذلك أعثرنا عليهم ليعلموا أن الله أن وعد الله حق وأن الساعة لا ريب فيها إذ يتنازعون بينهم أمرهم فقالوا بنوا عليهم بنيانا ربهم أعلم بهم قال الذين غلبوا على أمرهم لنتخذن عليهم مسجدا سيقولون, ثال... سيقولون ثلاثة رابعهم كلبهم ويقولون خمسة وسادسهم كلبهم رجما بالغيب ويقولون سبعة وثامنهم كلبهم قل ربي أعلم بعدتهم ما يعلمهم إلا قليل فلا تمار فيهم إلا مراء ظاهرا ولا تستفتي فيهم منهم أحدا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ikhwani, while we continue with the tafsir of Surah Al-Kahf and the story of the young people who went into the Kahf, the cave, after we mentioned the verse when Allah says, وَيْذِعْتَزَلْتُمُوهُمْ And when you abandoned and you stayed away from your people, when you withdrew from them, وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ And we say we didn't just, they didn't just stay away from their people. In fact, they also abandoned and stayed away and withdrew from whatever they worshipped besides Allah. And we say that is from the walwala walbara which every Muslim has to have. That not only do you physically stay away from the sins, physically, meaning you yourself as a person, you don't go to the place of sins, but also you have to stay away spiritually from the sins and the people who are sinful in your heart, you have to be someone who's disassociating from them. And that is what about Surah Al-Kafirun is about. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ Allah says next, وَتَرَ الشَّمْسَ إِذَا طَلَعَتْ And you shall see the sun. Now Allah is describing for us, these young men, they're in the cave already. And Allah has mentioned that He has done what? He has sealed, He has sealed their hearing and they are sleeping. What are shamsa? You'll see the sun. Ida tolaat when it's coming up. When it's coming up, when it's rising. When it's rising. Where does the sun rise from? The east. The east. Tazawaru an kahfihim that al yamin. It declines to the right from their cave. وَإِذَا غَرَبَتْ And when the sun is setting, the sun sets to the, to the west. تَقْرِبُهُمْ تَقْرِبُهُمْ ذَاتَ الشِّمَالِ It lays in the midst of the left, turning away from the left of their cave. وَهُمْ And they فِي فَجْوَةٍ مِنْهُ مِنْهُ Huh? The cave. And they, they, they are still in the cave. The sun does not touch them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so the, this cave, which direction is it facing? Who can, who can tell me? It's facing north. It's facing north. Because when the sun is rising, وَتَرَ الشَّمْسَ إِذَا طَلَعَتْ 
Tazawaru an kafihim that al yameen. The sun is rising to the right of their cave. So the sun is going this way. So their cave has to be here. This is the right. So it's going where? The sun is going which direction? Is it going east or west? The sun is going east? The sun is going west. It's going east to west. So the cave is facing where? North. وَهُمْ فِي فَجْوَةٍ مِّنْهُمْ Allah says here, Ikhwani, ذَلِكَ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ That is from the signs of Allah. That is this from the signs of Allah. The fact that they stayed there and they were not exposed to the sun. Naturally, they would or they have to be exposed to the sun. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He protected them from the sun. Because imagine a human being laying on the ground for 310 years with the sun hitting him every day. What will happen? Something like that. Something like that. Allah says, ذَلِكَ مِنْ آيَاتِ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ It is from the signs of Allah. That is why Allah then says next, مَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ Whoever Allah guides. فَهُوَ الْمُهْتَدْ He is the one who is guided. Whoever Allah's gu Allah guides, He is the one who is guided. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ And the one whom Allah misguides. فَلَنْ تَجِدَ لَهُ You will not find for that kind of a person. وَلِيًّا He does not have a wali, a guardian. مُرْشِدًا Or a guide. Guardian who protects you. Or مُرْشِدْ A guide. Allah mentions this to show that Allah is the one who guided them to go into that cave. Allah is the one who guided them to go into that cave. And we mentioned before how they used to make dua to Allah and Allah accepted their dua. رَبَّنَا أَتِنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً وَهِيِّ إِلَنَا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا رَشَدَ Make it easy for us and Allah made it easy for them. And this shows us again that you have to take the physical reasons and the resources you have for you to achieve what you want. And that is part of tawakkul. A tawakkul is for you to do the reasons which you have to do. And at the same time you know that it is only Allah who can make it work. And part of the reasons for everything is dua. مَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُهْتَدْ The one whom Allah guides, he's the one who's guided. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ And the one whom Allah misguides, the one whom Allah misguides, فَلَنْ تَجِدَ لَهُ You shall never find for him, you shall never find for this kind of a person, وَلِيًّا He shall never have a wali. الْوَلِي In Arabic, when you say, Hada wali, Hada wali, he is my wali. Huwa alladhi qad in'aqada baynaka wa baynahu sababun. It is someone who, between you and him, there's a pact, there's a reason, there's a bound, there's something binding between you and him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the wali of the believers. Allah says, Allah is the one who 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 is the one is the one who is the one who is the one who is the is the guardian, he is the protector, he is the guardian, he is the protector, he is the one who takes care of you. That's the meaning of wali. And that is why we use the same word. Uh, for who? For the father or the guardian of the woman when she wants to get married. This is the most common example for us to understand. The Prophet sallallahu says, what? La nikaha biduni wali. There's no nikah without a wali. The wali of the girl. Meaning the father or the uncle or the brother. Why? Because those people... They look after what is good for the girl. 
the purpose of the wali ikhwani in a marriage is for after the person comes to propose you as the man you decide you look after you know you look for what is good for your sister or your daughter this man is he a good man you go do the research you understand because the woman might be moved by her emotions that she wants to get married or she likes the guy whatever it is you are taking care of her that's the meaning of the wali you are the guardian so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-wali the greatest and the most perfect of all guardians and Allah is the guardian of the believers Allahu waliyul ladina amanu that's why these people whom they have been misguided they have no wali that is why Allah says dhalika bi anna Allah mawla alladhina amanu wa anna al-kafirina la mawla lahum that is because Allah he is the mawla of those who believe and the kafirin they have no mawla Taib. and so what is this bind what is this contract which is between you and Allah that Allah is your wali what is it it is the belief in Allah and then obeying Allah if you disbelieve in Allah there's no more bound, b- a contract or bound between you and Allah you have to know that if you're disobedient to Allah your your wilaya with Allah your allyship with Allah is weak it's weak the more you are a good believer the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you his wali you get, you get close to Allah al wilaya khwani is not because of a green tab on you you become a wali of Allah or because the great sufi sheikh he gave you his bags of books now you become the wali no it's not something inherited al wilaya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he describes in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says how do you become a wali of Allah how do you become a wali of Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says uh, what does the ayah say can someone take control of them they look new here they don't know the rules ala inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun Allah says surely the awliya of Allah wali is one awliya is plural in Arabic the allies of Allah la khawfun alayhim they shall have no fear wa la hum yahzanun they will never be sad who are they though alladhina amanu wa kanu yattaqun they are those people who used to believe in Allah properly proper aqida وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ and they used to fear Allah proper actions that is how you become a wali of Allah that is how you become a wali of Allah those who believe in Allah and then they fear Allah those who believe in Allah and then they fear Allah so anyone who believes in Allah and he becomes closer to Allah by obeying Allah by taqwa the more taqwa you have the more of a wali you are to Allah the less taqwa you have the less you are far the, the more far you are to Allah that is how it is that is how it is it's not a title you give yourself it's not the clothes you wear that is how wilaya is Taib. so those who disbelieve they have no mawla they have no mawla and in the hadith after the battle of Uhud when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he took refuge he climbed the hill and Abu Bakr and Umar and the other Sahaba and Abu Sufyan he came and he said this today is for uh, is for the day of Badr today is for the day of Badr and then he said what The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ala taruddun alay? Won't you reply to him? Won't you reply to him? How you let this person who's a kafir just speak against the Muslims? You don't reply. Say it to him. Mother naqul. They said, Mother naqul. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says to them, Say to them. Say to him. Qatlana fil jannah. Those who are killed of us, they're going to jannah, and those who are killed of you are going to the hellfire." And then he said what Abu Sufyan and this was before Abu Sufyan was a Muslim obviously he said what 
لا يصيد يعلو عز وهبل ولا عز لكم he said عز and هبل those are the two two of the great idols they used to worship they are great and you don't have عز and the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said to them ألا تردون عليه what you reply to him they said what should you say يا رسول الله he said what الله مولانا لا مولا لكم Allah is our Mawla and you have no Mawla. Tahim? So this is, these are words which are important. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your Mawla. And Allah says, Ni'm al-Mawla. What a great Mawla, guardian, protector, ally is Allah. Naam. Falan tajid alahu. So these kind of people have been misguided. They're not Muslims. They don't have any wali. And they don't have any murshid. And this teaches us, they have no guide. Uh, guide. Murshid is someone who guides you. Someone who guides you. That no matter whatever people do or they take as the ways of life, as long as it's not based and it's not leading to Allah, then it's all deviation. فَلَنْ تَجْدَ لَهُ وَلِيًّا مُرْشِدًا if it doesn't lead to Allah, then it is deviation. There's no good in it. There's no good in it. And that is why it's called Sirat al-Mustaqim, Ikhwan. Sirat al-Mustaqim is only one. We don't have different paths which lead to Allah, no. It's only one path. That is the path of Islam. It's only one path. There's no other path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he says وَتَحْسَبُهُمْ أَيْقَاضَ وَتَحْسَبُهُمْ Again It's still the scenario where Allah is describing to us If you are there, if you are to see this picture What is happening Allah just described The setting How the sun is moving In relation to this place and before we mention it was a cave. A cave is open. What is the hikmah behind it being a cave? It is open. Huh? Circulation of air, ventilation. Otherwise, if it was dump in there, there's no air coming in and out. What, what will happen to their bodies? They would rot in 300 years. You understand? Allah says if you are to come and see this picture now. وَتَحْسَبُهُمْ أَيْقَاضًا you would think, when you see them, you think, oh, these people, they're awake. They're just laying down there. Aiqadhan, jam'u, yaqid. Aiyaqdhan. Someone who's awake. Someone who's awake, opposite of sleeping. So if you're to, to meet them, if you're to pass by this cave, you think they're awake, actually. They're not deep in, in a sleep of 300 years. وَتَحْسَبُهُمْ أَيْقَاضًا وَهُمْ رُقُودٌ But in reality they are sleeping. وَنُقَلِّبُهُمْ Allah says and we change them and we move them. ذَاتَ الْيَمِينِ وَذَاتَ الشِّمَالِ We move them to their right sides to sleep on their right and then we change them another time they sleep on their right and the left side. So if you come today, you think they're awake, they're just laying down on the right side. If you come maybe after five days or five years, you think they're awake, but they're sleeping on their left side. What is the hikmah behind that? What happens, Ikhwani, when you, a human being, you are to lay on the ground for a hundred years, let's say just five, ten, ten days, ten days without moving, just lying on the ground. We know what happens to the human body when it's put in the ground, right? Your skin cells die, everything disintegrates, everything is lost into the ground. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his hikmah and his rahmah for them, remember it's all rahmah of Allah, Allah used to change them, make them change their sides. Because if they only stayed on one side, this side will be destroyed by the ground. That's natural. 
So Allah used to change them. That al yamin wa that al shimal. Wa kalbuhum, and if you are to come again, this is the description. Wa kalbuhum and their dog. Basitun dhira'aihi. It is outstretching its legs. Bil wasid e bil fana'il kahf. On the front, on the entrance of the cave. So they are inside. And on the entrance is the dog stretching its legs. And the dog is something. It is asleep, but you think it's awake. If you are to actually come around this cave and to see this scenario, Allah says, you would have run away. Why? You would have been filled minhum by their sight ru'ba with fear. You have been you have been you would have been terrorized. It's funny when Muslims use the word terror. It's supposed to be our uh, copyright. Bad joke. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if you came in to see them, you would have been filled with so much fear you'd run away. Subhanallah. Can you imagine that? Why? Why did Allah do this? To protect them. So that anyone, again it's a cave. There's no sign saying don't come to this cave. It's a cave somewhere. Anyone can just pass by. And it's open like we said. But Allah, he made it seem if you came, you'd think they're awake and you'd be filled with fear. And you'll say, no, no, I don't want to be here. You'd run away. And that is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them. And that tells you when Allah wants something to happen, Allah can just say, kun fayakun. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes reasons for things. Allah can make it rain without clouds, but Allah made the clouds to be a reason. Allah can make food come to your table, but Allah made a reason. That is the crops have to grow. You understand? There's reasons for everything. And this again tells us that tawakkul, real tawakkul is taking the reasons, like we said, and depending on Allah, that is the most important thing. So this is the description of that setting of theirs. And they stayed there. They stayed there. Sinina adada, as Allah says that, Yes, yes. And then what happened? And like that then. We mentioned this before last week. The word ba'ath is used for what? Resurrection. Resurrection. Giving life to what is dead. But we said no. Just like it is also used for someone who is asleep. Just like maut is used for someone who is Asleep or tawafi is used for someone who is asleep. وَكَذَلِكَ بَعَثْنَاهُمْ And like that we resurrected them. We brought them up. We gave them life again. Why? Why didn't Allah just leave them there? These young men, they grew up in noble families. They were being tested by their people, wanted them to worship idols. They stood up. They said, no, we are Muslims. And they gave people da'wah, their own people. Their people threatened them, we're going to kill you. They ran away. They found a cave. They went into the cave. They were making dua all that time. Allah has protected them. Allah put them to sleep. Why does Allah bring them up to life now? Allah says, لِيَتَسَاءَلُوا بَيْنَهُمْ So they can start asking each other. قَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّنْهُمْ One of them, he said, قَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّنْهُمْ One of them he said, كَمْ لَبِثْتُمْ Guys, how, do, how much time do you think we've been here? How long do you think we've been here in this cave sleeping? Because imagine, it's not like they went into the cave knowing we'll be here for 300 years. Obviously, they didn't know that. They are running away from their people. They see a cave. They say, you know what? Let's go in this cave. They go into the cave. Allah makes them sleep. Now they wake up. Now they wake up. 
And he asked them, others, how long do you think we've been sleeping? Qalu, some of them, they said, لَبِثْنَا يَوْمًا وَبَعْضَ يَوْمًا We've been sleeping for a day, or maybe part of the day, or some days. Qalu, and then they said, all of them, or some of them, رَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا لَبِثْتُمْ You know what? In reality, your Lord is the one who knows how long you've been here. One of them asks, how long have you been here? Some of them say, maybe a day or some days. Then they said, all of them, they remembered. They said, you know what? The reality is, Rabbukum A'lamu. Your Lord is the one who knows best. Your Lord is the one who knows best. But now, they were hungry. But now, they were hungry. Obviously, you're a human being. You have to eat. You have needs. فَبْعَثُوا أَحَدَكُمْ So they said, okay, but anyway, let's send one of us. بِوَارِقِكُمْ الْوَارِقْ هُوَ الْفِضَّةِ Warik is fidda, Silver. Silver in Arabic is called warik or fidda, Both words. فَبْعَثُوا أَحَدَكُمْ بِوَارِقِكُمْ هَذِي This tells you they had money they carried with them. Again, remember, they're just running away and they have money. And this is what we're saying, Ikhwan. If you're going to make hijra, we're not saying just pack your bags and go wherever you are. No, no, no. Take the means, prepare. You need cash. Make sure you have enough cash. They said, send one of you with these silver coins. Il al Madinati back to the city. Showing you that they were far away from the city. They had left the city. Il al Madinati. فَلْيَنْظُرْ Let him search and look إِلَ أَيُّهَا أَزْكَى طُعَامًا To some of the pure nice food he can find and bring it to us because they're hungry. فَلْيَأْتِكُمْ بِرِزْقٍ مِّنْهُ Let him bring that food which is the rizq for you. وَلْيَتَلَطَّفْ And let him be subtle. Let him be subtle. Let him be incognito. Let him be Discreet. وَلْيَتَلَطَّفْ وَلَا يُشْعِرَنَّ بِكُمْ أَحَدَ So that nobody can find out about you. Remember again, there are people filled with fear. They ran away from the city. But now they're hungry. What are they supposed to do? So they just send one of them. Go bring food. Make sure nobody notices you. Come back. Before going ahead, Yohani, some of the benefits in this ayah. One of the main benefits in this ayah is that when you don't know about something, you don't speak. And this is something important. When you don't know about something, you don't speak. You return the knowledge to Allah. Say, Allahu A'lam, or Rabbukum A'lam. Your Lord knows best. Some of them, they said, maybe a day or some days, then they all say, you know what? In reality, only Allah knows. Only Allah knows. Abdullah bin Mas'ud as Imam al-Bukhari he reportedly said he said ayyuha an-nas man kana 'indahu 'ilmun falyaqul wa man lam yakun 'indahu 'ilmun falyaqul Allahu a'lam fa inna min al-'ilm an an yaqul ar-rajul Allahu a'lam whoever has knowledge let him say speak if you have knowledge if you have no knowledge say Allah knows best because part of knowledge is to say Allah knows best and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he warned those who speak without knowledge. It's one of the greatest sins. In fact, some of the scholars say it is the greatest sin to speak without knowledge. Something you know, speak. Something is just speculation, don't speak. Don't speak. Rabbukum a'lamu bima labithum. Only your Lord knows. Your Lord knows. This is something important. It is something you're reminded every Friday when you read Surah Al-Kahf. Every Friday when you read Surah Al-Kahf. The next thing we get here. فَبْعَثُوا أَحَدَكُمْ بِوَرِقِكُمْ هَذِي Send one of you to get this food by this silver. He says, فَلْيَنْذُرْ أَيُّهَا أَزْكَى طُعَامًا Allah says, they say to each other, let him find which is the purest azka. Of food. 
وَلْيَأْتِكُمْ بِرِزْقٍ مِّنْهُ Let him bring it so it's risk for you can eat. This is a proof, Ikhwani, that there's nothing wrong with enjoying good food. There's nothing wrong with enjoying good food. As long as we stay in the limits of what Allah wants, and that is what? It has to be halal and without israf, wastage of money, excessiveness. There's nothing wrong with enjoying good food. As long as it is halal and there's no excessiveness and wastage of money. There's nothing wrong with that. Especially if someone is used to that. You know, some of us, we want to impose things on others even though it's not from the obligatory things. Not everyone can just eat bread and olive oil and they're good. Not everyone can do that. Some people, that's how they grew up. They've been used to the finer foods and the finer things in life. You can't blame them. As long as they're staying without these boundaries, like we said, it is halal, and it doesn't mean it's excessive, that you're wasting money, then alhamdulillah it is halal. قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي أَخْرَجَ الْعِبَادِهِ وَالطَّيِّبَاتِ مِنَ الرِّزْقِ Allah says, say, who is the one who made haram? The good clothes and the good food which Allah has made halal. Who made it haram? It's okay as long as you stay within the boundaries. Especially if you're used to it. Like these young men, like we said, they were people from noble families. They were from noble families. The sons of kings and princes and noble men. So they were used to the good food. They were used to the good food. فَلْيَنْذُرْ أَيُّهَا أَزْكَ طُعَامًا فَلْيَأْتِكُمْ بِرِزْقٍ مِّنْهُ وَلْيَتَلَطَّفْ Let him be subtle, let him be discreet so that they don't find out about you. That is tawakkul ikhwani. Tawakkul is not to say, you know what, I'm just going to walk without and Allah is protecting me. No. Allah said to you, take the means. I'm repeating this because many of us, we don't understand what tawakkul is. You have to take the means. But you don't depend on the means. Like we say, you depend on Allah. You depend on Allah, yes, that is tawakkul, but everything has a reason. Everything has a reason. People are looking for you, make sure you're discreet, so they don't find out about you. Why? Because, innahum, in yadharu alaykum, the next ayah now, number 20. Because they, meaning their people, in yadharu alaykum, if they find out about you, yarjumukum, they will stone you to death. They will stone you to death. And that is the worst death a human being can have. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Islamic Sharia, He put it for the worst sins. Like zina ba'da ihsan. After someone is married. To commit zina. Or al-liwat. Homosexuality. Doing the act. For a human being to be stoned to death. That is the worst. The worst death. So they said, be careful, because these people, if they find you, this is what they're going to do to us. Oh, or even worse than that, يُعِيدُكُمْ فِي مِلَّتِهِمْ They will bring you back to kufr, you'll leave Islam, and that is worse than dying. وَلَن تُفْلِحُوا إِذًا أَبَدًا And then you'll never be successful. You die upon shirk, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ that is the greatest loss. قُلْ إِنَّ الْخَاسِرِينَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَهْلِيهِمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَلَا ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ That is the greatest loss. That to die upon shirk. So be careful because if they find us out, they will either stone us or worse than that, they will take us back to kufr and will never be successful. Now imagine again, they are still thinking they just stayed for a day or two. They are dealing with the same people. But in reality, it's been years. In fact, not just years. It's been centuries. It's been centuries. They are thinking the same thing. That we're living in a place where people are mushrikun. And they are forcing people to leave Islam, in fact. That's why they had to run. That's why they had to run. And that tells you, Khwani, that when you become a mushrik, a kafir, you'll never succeed. Mata'un qalil, Allah says. Little enjoyment in this world. Just little enjoyment. 
ثم ماواهم جهنم and then their end is jahannam wal yadam billah wa bi's al masir and what an evil ending that is and that tells you khawani success success is by only submitting to allah submitting to allah walan tuflihu idhan abada you shall never never what happened then allah says wa kadhalika and like that a'tharna alayhim we made the people find out about them someone may ask why does why does allah why did allah make this happen when allah has protected them for 300 years wa kadhalika a'tharna alayhim allah says like that we made the people find out about them why what is the reason ikhwani li'lamu so they can know who can know the people anna wa'dallahi haqqun that the promise of allah is true wa anna as-sa'ata la rayba fiha two things that the promise of allah is true wa anna as-sa'ata la rayba fiha and that the hour the day of judgment there is no doubt about it it is coming you will be resurrected after you die إذ يتنازعون بينهم أمرهم when the two groups they differed Muslims who said yes we are going to die and we are going to be resurrected and the kuffar who said no we just live this life and it's done Allah he made these people to be the sign why did Allah make them to be found out so the people can learn listen this is a sign see and how were they found out they said this young man when he went back to the to the city to get food and he sees everything has changed everything has changed this is a real time travel 300 years imagine 300 years everything has changed can you imagine someone from what is today someone from 1715 the year 1715 we bring him allah brings him back to life today and you put him here in this world today he'll he'll lose his mind right 1715 they didn't even have electricity for that sake we're not talking about planes and the internet and whatever you see a a screen talking to you right So he goes and he says everything has changed 300 years subhanallah and he takes out his coin to get food now because now he's filled with fear now he's filled with fear he's very nervous like what is happening everything is different people are different he can't recognize anyone anyone can't recognize him clothing is different everything is different 300 years 300 years and all he wants to do now is to just leave get the food and leave he takes out his coin he gives it to the person and the guy looks at it he says are you joking where did you get this and he says no are you joking with me i just want the food i want to go and the person he starts to call the other seller he's in the marketplace he says come look at this and they say did you find a treasure that's what they asked him did you find a kans treasure you know treasure hidden wealth from before he said no like what is what is happening here and they saw in the coin you know how the coins they they mint the coin with the names of the leaders usually like all you have all the money you have it had the name of the leader of that time so they thought this is 300 years ago this guy found a A, 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 a treasure and of course these young men did not age that is from the miracle of allah they did not age it's not like they were young like they were 30 now they are 330 no they were the same allah he protected them that is from the eye of allah the sign so they start passing around and a buzz is created and everybody comes around him and they take him to the leader 
they take him to the leader. When he gets there, the leader, he becomes very happy. He says, you are one of those nine men or young men who we heard their story about. They ran away from the city to protect their din. Take us to your fellows. Now they recognized him because he can't hide it. The point behind all of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was proving to the people that Allah can make you die and bring you back after 300 years. He can make you die and he will bring you back on the day of judgment. This is the concept which was emphasized a lot to the Quraysh of Mecca because they used to deny it. And today also we need it a lot because people are becoming atheists today. This is a concept that is why you know the Quran is relevant for every time, subhanAllah. People who deny, they say, no, we just live and we die. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is easy for me to bring you back. لِيَعْلَمُوا So you can know, أَنَّ وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ The promise of Allah is true. وَأَنَّ السَّاعَةَ لَا يَرِيبَ فِيهَا That the hour, he has no doubt about it. He has no doubt about it. So he takes the people, the leader, and he shows them the cave. And before entering, he says to them, let me enter first, so that my, my fellows, my, my brothers inside there, they won't get scared. They won't get scared. He goes inside, he informs them, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes them now die, all of them. He goes inside, he tells his other brothers were in there. Listen guys, I went to the city. This is what happened. Everything has changed. People found out they're now outside. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now made them die. Now they died. Because the purpose has been served. Now the people are outside. When they saw this, they started to debate between themselves. If yatanaza'una bainahum amrahum. Faqalu, those were the good Muslims, they said, Let's just cover this cave. Let's just build something on it and leave them. Your Lord, their Lord knows more, better about them. Allah will deal with them. We don't have to take them and go bury them or anything. Let's just cover this cave and leave them inside. Allah will deal with them. Then there was the other group which said, and this other group, was the group which had more power. It had more power. قَالَ الَّذِينَ غَلَبُوا عَلَىٰ أَمْرِهِمْ They said, لَنَتَّخِذَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ مَسْجِدًا We shall take them as a masjid. We shall take them as a masjid. What does that mean? Meaning, this place of theirs, this is, these are great awliya of Allah. Allah protected them like this. Now we are going to pray in here because this place is full of baraka, blessings. We are going to take this place as a masjid. What does the word masjid mean in Arabic, Ikhwani? Masjid, it has two meanings. Masjid, you know, a structure, a building where people worship is called a masjid. Or anywhere where you pray is called a masjid. It doesn't have to be a structure. It can be open. It can be in your house. You have a special room for praying. That's called a masjid. You have to know. You understand? A place of prayer, Islamic, Islamic Sharia, that place of prayer is called a masjid. That is why the Prophet said, masjidan wa tahura. The whole earth for us is a masjid. You can pray. Except two places Al Maqbara wal Hammam, the washroom and the, and the cemetery, the grave. So they said we'll take this place as a place of worship. And they are the ones who غلبوا على أمرهم they had more power. So they won in that debate. Because they had more power. The others they were weak. Now this is a point we'll come back to because it is important. Is this allowed or not to take the graves as places of worship? Or to believe there's blessings in that place? We'll come back to this. Let us complete the story first. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sayaquluna, they will say, they will say, who is they here? Specifically, 
the Jews and the Christians, because the Jews specifically, because they came to argue with the Prophet وسلم, and the Christians, because the Christians they believe in this story also, like we said before. And I mentioned this, and maybe some of you are, are wondering why I'm avoiding this, but we mentioned this, Yahwani, we have to believe in something very important. Whatever we need to succeed, and success is by going to Jannah and avoiding hellfire. Whatever we need to succeed, Allah has given it to us. Whatever we don't need, we don't need. So where was this cave? Was it Turkey or Jordan or Iraq? We don't need to know that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change. The point here is the lessons of this story. You understand? Now, they will say, Sayaquluna, they will say, Thalathatun, they were just three, Rabi'uhum kalbuhum, and the fourth was the dog. One group will say that. Wayaqulun, another group will say, Khamsatun, there were five young men, Sadisuhum, kalbuhum, and the sixth was the dog. Rajman bil ghaib. Rajman bil ghaib. Just guessing. You know, in English they say guesstimating. Right? It's not English, anyways. But they are guessing and estimating. But this is Rajman bil ghaib. Talking about the unseen. Guessing about the unseen. Which is something, like we said, it is madhmum. It is something madhmum. It is something displeased in the Sharia. You don't know something, say Allahu A'lam. They say it is three and the dog is fourth. Or they say it is five and the dog is sixth. Allah says these people, they're just guessing about the unseen. وَيَقُولُونَ And they will also say, سَبْعَةٌ There were seven young men. ثَامِنُهُمْ وَثَامِنُهُمْ كَلْبُهُمْ And the eighth was the dog. قُلْ Say to them now, Allah is directing who? The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to reply to them. Qul, say to them, Rabbi a'lamu bi'iddatihim. My Lord, he knows better. What was their number? Ma ya'lamuhum illa qalil. Only a few people know exactly. Fala tumari fihim. Allah says, so do not debate, do not argue with the Jews or anyone else about these young men. Illa mira'an bahira. Except if it's a debate which is clear. وَلَا تَسْتَفْتِ فِيهِمْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا And do not seek a fatwa, seek consultation about these people to anyone else except Allah. They will say it is three and the fourth was the dog. They will say it is five and the sixth was the dog. Allah says these are guessing of the unseen. And they'll say it is seven, and the eighth was the dog. Allah A'lam, but this is the right number, because after Allah said about those two numbers, Rajman bil ghaib, they are guessing about the unseen. This one Allah did not say that. And then Allah says though, when they tell you anything, say to them, my Lord, he knows best, what was their number? لا يعلمهم ما يعلمهم إلا قليل Only a few people know. Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, Whenever he used to read this ayah, he would say, Ana min al qalil. I'm from those few people who know. And Abdullah bin Abbas, he has the right to do that. He's one of the greatest scholars of Islam. He would say, I'm from those little people who know. Which shows you, if someone has knowledge, there's nothing wrong with saying, I know. As long as you're not boasting, it's not about boasting. You're saying what is there. And in fact, if you say it, by uh, 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 on the way of uh, of uh, of realizing Allah's favors of you, then that is good. That is good. Fala to marry fihim illa mira and wahira. Do not argue with them. Do not debate them. Except a debate or an arguing which is clear. So this ayah, khwani, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, just like Allah said, "Wala tu jadil ahl al kitab illa billati." Here, Ahsan, do not argue with the Jews and the Christians or anybody else to call them to Islam except in a good way, except if there's benefit. Argumentation for the sake of it, debate for the sake of it, when there's no benefit, 
is haram in Islam. It's haram. You only speak to someone who you think there's benefit in it. You don't debate for the sake of debate, no. It's haram. And then next Allah says, وَلَا تَسْتَفْتِي فِيهِمْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا Al-istifta is to seek a fatwa. Allah says, don't consult them. Don't ask them for anything about these people. This is Jews and Christians and anyone else for that sake. Why? Why, Ikhwani? Because of the ayah we just mentioned before. Man yahdi Allahu fahuwa al-muhtad. We say the straight path is one. The path of Allah. Once the path of Allah has come to you, the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, as understood by the Salaf, you don't need to go asking anyone else about anything. Allah has mentioned the story of Ashab al Kahf to you. You don't need to go to the Bible or the Torah to find what is the what does the Bible and the Torah say. No. Don't ask them about anything. Allah says. And this also teaches us what? When you seek a fatwa, you only ask those who are qualified. Some of us, anyone who has a beard, he's a mufti for you. Anybody who speaks Arabic is a mufti. That's why we go into trouble. We go into trouble. Or we only ask those people who we know they'll give us the answer we want. You know, he does, he's not qualified to speak. But you know he'll give you the answer you want, so you ask him. And you say, oh no, Sheikh so and so told me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best judge. You can fool the people, but you cannot make fun of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّ فَاعِلُ ذَلِكَ غَدَا And do not say about anything. I'm going to do that tomorrow. Illa except an yasha Allah, you add the mashi'ah of Allah. You say only if Allah wills. Illa an yasha Allah. That is the importance and the obligation of saying what? Insha Allah. If Allah wills, if Allah wants. Don't say I'll do this, I'll do that. Except by saying if Allah wins, if Allah wants. Insha Allah. But if you forget to say insha'Allah, remember Allah when you forget when you remember. Meaning glorify Allah. Do the dhikr of Allah. Say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. And you should say, Asa an yahdiani Rabbi, maybe insha'Allah Allah will guide me. Li aqraba min hadha rashada to something better than this. That next time I will say insha'Allah. And also this part of the ayat says, if you want to remember something and you forget, you can't remember, then remember Allah. Do dhikr of Allah. I say, what was the name of the brother? Uh, you should say dhikr of Allah. Say, la ilaha illallah, subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. Allah will make you remember. You understand? وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيت وَقُلْ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِ رَبِّ لِأَقْرَبَ مِنْ هَذَا رَشَدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then finishes off the story by saying وَلَبِثُوا and they stayed فِي كَهْفِهِمْ in their cave ثَلَاثَ مِئَةٍ سِنِينَ three hundred years وَزْدَادُوا تِسْعَةً with nine more three hundred years with nine more we said what is the meaning of that? It is 300 solar years, the Gregorian calendar you use today as you call it. With nine years added, if you use the lunar calendar, the Islamic calendar we use. So it's 309 uh, lunar years, or 300 solar years. Say to them, Allah, he knows best, bima labithu, how long they stayed there in. And this is what Allah has said. So it's 309. To Allah belongs the unseen of the heavens and the earth. Allah knows everything which is unseen. How perfect is Allah's sight 
and how perfect is Allah's hearing. Malahum min dunihi min waliyin. They do not have other than Allah any other wali. And we just spoke about the wali. You see how it is repeated? Very important. You have no wali other than Allah. Malahum min dunihi min waliyin. You have no other wali other than Allah. That is why if you take any other person to be a wali besides Allah, we always fail. We always fail. So everybody should ask himself, who's your wali? Who's your partner? Uh, not partner. Um, what is the word? Patron. Who's your patron? Your guardian. Who's your guardian? Who is the person you love most? Who's the one you love most? If it is Allah, then know that he is the only true wali. If it's not, then you always find problems in your life. مَا لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍ These young men, they had no other wali except Allah. That is why they were successful. وَلَا يُشْرِكُوا And they should not make partners. فِي حُكْمِهِ أَحَدَوَ in the hukm, the judgment of Allah with anyone. Allah is the only wali and Allah is the only one who is the one who judges and makes laws. No one else should be made as a partner to Allah in that. Allah says, in il hukmu illa lillah, hukm, judgment, and making of laws and legislation is only for Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمًا Who is better in making laws than Allah? Nobody else. But today the human being has put himself on that level and you convey, and the human being conveys in a parliament making laws, making themselves partners with Allah indirectly or some of them directly. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is one of his attributes, ikhwan. Just like Allah is the only one to be worshipped, Allah is the only one who makes the laws. Now, coming back to the point of, Isha is 8th or 8.15, eh? Of those who, they had the power they said we'll build a masjid. Is this allowed? This is something not allowed. And it doesn't say anywhere here in the Quran that it is something good. Allah is telling us what they said. It does not mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala agrees with it. That is why the Prophet وسلم, he came to clarify this matter very clearly. In so many ahadith. And he emphasized this, he emphasized this, sorry. Just a few days, five days before he died, sallallahu alayhi wa And from the last day he died, he emphasized this again. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa like in the hadith you mentioned before, from the six things, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa has been made special over all other prophets. One of them is what? وَطَهُورًا For our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa and our ummah, the whole earth has been made what? A masjid, a place of worship. And tahur, meaning you can purify yourself with dirt if there's no water. The whole earth, whether it is gravel, sand, cement, whatever it is. He said what? أَدْرَكَتْهُ الصَّلَاةِ So anyone, the salah time comes in, you are far away from the masjid. There's no excuse of saying I have to go to the masjid. فَلْيُصَلْ let him, so let him pray. Except what? إِلَّا الْحَمَّامِ وَالْمَقْبَرَةِ That's the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The whole earth is a place of worship. It's a masjid. Except what? The washroom and the maqbara, the graveyard or the cemetery. Those are the two exceptions. Anywhere else you can pray. Anywhere else you can pray. And this is how they were. They used to pray everyone. This is how all of us are, alhamdulillah. Now the Prophet ﷺ five days before he died in the hadith of Jabir, 
He said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لعن الله اليهود النصارى اتخذوا قبور أنبيائهم وصلاحيهم مساجد Allah, he cast the Jews and the Christians because they took the graves of the prophets who died and the good men who died as places of worship, masjid. And he said the definition of masjid is what? It doesn't have to be built. It's a place of worship. Allah, he cast them. In the hadith of Aisha in Sahih Muslim, these hadith are so many, khwan. In Sahih Muslim, Aisha radiallahu anha, after she narrated this hadith, she said, يُحَذِّرُوا مِمَّا صُنَعُوا The Prophet ﷺ was warning us from what they did. He was warning us from what they did five days before he passed away Wasallam. Then she said, Aisha, وَلَوْ لَا ذَلِكْ If it was not for that, لَأُبْرِزَ قَبْرُهُ His grave would be open. But he feared that people would take it a place of worship. That is why the Sahaba, all of them agreed to bury the Prophet ﷺ in his house, not even in the graveyard, in his house, so that people don't take his grave as a place of worship. And he said, Allah has cast the Jews and that. Allah has cast the Jews and Christians for that, sorry. So you don't do the same, because if you do the same, Allah will curse you also. Allah will curse you. And the hadith reported by uh, in the Muat of Malik, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made dua. In fact, he said, Allahumma la taj'al qabri wathanan yu'bad. O oh Allah, do not make my grave as a wathan. Wathan commonly we translate as what? Idol. But wathan in Arabic is everything which is worshipped. It's called wathan besides Allah. Whether it is an idol of stone or metal or a table, it's called wathan. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O oh Allah, do not make my grave as an idol, a place of worship which people worship. Now what do you think? When the Prophet ﷺ makes dua, does Allah accept his dua or not? And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he protected that. You understand? He made dua, oh Allah, do not make my grave as a place of worship. And he said sallallahu alayhi wa in the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, reported by uh, uh, Abu Dawood, he said, Sharru nas, Sharru nas, the worst people, the worst people in front of Allah. Man tudrikuhumu sa'at wa hum ahya. Are those people will be alive when the horn is blown for the hour, the last day. Those are the worst people. Wa man yattakhidu al qubura masajid. And those people, the second kind of people, are those who take graves as places of worship. The worst people in front of Allah. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Sahih Muslim again, لا تصلي على قبر ولا تجلس عليها ولا تصلي إليها. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Don't pray facing the grave. It's haram. And don't sit on the grave. It's haram to sit on a grave. And do not pray on the grave. Facing the grave, it's haram. Sitting on the grave is haram, even if you're not doing ibadah, just sitting. And even standing on the grave, if you say, I'm, I'm worshipping Allah, it is haram. Why, ikhwani? There's two kinds of people who do these things. People who, they face the grave and worship it, asking that person in the grave, they say, this is a great person, this is a prophet of Allah. So we can ask him, and that is shirk. And that is just worship, like worshipping an idol. Same thing. It's just like worshipping an idol. What is the difference between that person and the person who worships Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus? What's the difference? There's no difference. That is kufr, major kufr. And then you have the other group, which is majority of the Muslims who do this. They say, you know what? This person was a great person. So we believe if I, if I make dua here or I pray here, uh, or a sacrifice here, there is more barakah here, Allah will accept it better. This is a bid'ah which leads to shirk. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ was warning. Because once you do that, and then other people come, or you yourself, after doing that, you're worshipping Allah, but you believe this place is blessed because so and so is buried here. The next thing which leads you is just extremism for you to actually worship the person. 
That is why Islam would close the doors. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, he warned us very severely. Don't do that. Don't do that. And you'll find it's very sad that those people who go to the graves like that, they have more khushur and they worship better around the graves than they do in any masjid, even if they went to Makkah. That is the reality. That is the reality because of the extremism which the shaitan loves. It is haram, completely haram, to do any ibadah like worshipping in the grave. It is more severe when we bury someone in the masjid. It's not allowed to pray there. Example, this masjid of ours. If there was a grave on the corner there, it's haram for us to pray in this masjid. In fact, if you pray, your salah is not accepted. The grave doesn't have to be in the front, no. If it's in the masjid, it's haram. It's not allowed. If it was just outside the masjid, this is the masjid here, it's right next to the wall, it is still haram. There has to be a distinguishing barrier between the grave, this is the grave, it has ended here, this is the masjid which is here. It is haram, you're not supposed to pray there, your surah is not valid. You understand? And this is something all of the scholars of Islam in all the madhabs they agreed to. Because it is something very clear. It is something very, very clear. It does not need any other explanation. But, as the Prophet Sallallahu he warned the Khwani, said, you will follow the ways you will follow the ways of those be before you. Shibran bi shibran, dhira'a bi dhira'a. Just step by step, hadhu qadhu bi qadhu. Step by step, you'll follow them. Hatta wa law dakhala ala Ah, juhur dhib la dakhaltumu. To the point that if they entered the hall of a lizard, you'll follow them. They said, Ya Rasulullah, man hum al-Yahud al-Nasara? Qala man hum, qala fa man, who else? Who else? And that is what the Muslims are doing. The Prophet Sallallahu he warned that. But now Muslims are doing that. Ikhwani, there's so many proofs against this. The Sahaba, when they used to go to ask Aisha questions, all of us know they used to do that. Uh, or the Tabi'een. We never heard of any of them who went to Aisha. They said first, Ya Ummah, wait. Let me say salam on the Prophet. Let me pray here and then I'll ask you a question. These were things they... They never did because they knew these are things which are shirk. These are things which are shirk. As for those who will ask then, how come the grave of the Prophet is in the masjid today? We know that this happened years after the Prophet ﷺ died during the reign of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. After all of the Sahaba had passed away, Abdul Malik was the leader. He was expanding the masjid. And he decided to expand it in that side and to, and to demolish the houses or the rooms of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, except the room of Aisha where Abu Bakr, uh, the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr and Umar are buried. That is when it came into the masjid. But before that, it was outside the masjid. And the scholars of that time, like Saeed ibn Jubair, they spoke against that. But you can't do anything. That was the leader he has decided. You understand? Lakin alhamdulillah, you know, it is protected and there is no way you can face, you can face the grave. You know that. There is no way you can be behind the grave praying in that masjid. There is no way. Meaning the qibla. You cannot face, the, you cannot have the grave to be between you and the qibla. It's impossible. You have to turn around. That means you are going to look for that. You are someone who, may Allah guide all of us, you are looking for the shirk. And that is why, alhamdulillah, Allah put those brothers there. You go there and they all, you must shik. Huh? Yalla, bismillah, yalla, yalla, yalla. Go, go, hajji, hajji, go, go, go. Because people go there and do crazy things. Right? But this is the reality, khwani. And uh, Islam is clear. You worship only Allah. And the places which are blessed are clear. You know? And none of that is in the graves. Not even the grave of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa so this is the story of the people of the cave, Ikhwani. And like you see, there's a lot of benefits. Uh, we will continue next week, insha'Allah. When Allah says, وَطْلُ مَا أُوحِي لَيْكَ مِنْ كِتَابِ رَبِّكَ لَا مُبَدِّلْ لِكَلِمَاتِهِ We'll continue from that ayah, insha'Allah.
سبحانك اللهم بحمدك شهد لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وتوب إليك